it's rare that a, an ambitious person, ambitious person looks back at their career and says that they've achieved everything that they wanted to achieve. Uh, did you achieve everything that you wanted to achieve? Or is there one thing that uh, has eluded you? Well, there's always uh, uh, more more to do, and uh, may, may, maybe that's one of the things that kept me at NOC f mm. for so long. It was just always the next thing to to do in terms of uh, pushing things forward. So, um, um, but you have to draw a line a line somewhere. Um, I I think I basically did achieve. What I set out to do in terms of establishing the NOC as a as a true national centre uh, and one that is very vibrant and functioning, and that's certainly the the right moment to to hand hand on. Um, I think the I, I was asked this question um, by colleagues in Liverpool: um, Is there anything you've achieved that? Uh, that you wanted to, that you didn't. And I gave them a one word uh, or two word answer, uh, which they found very amusing, which was tide gauges, uh, um, which uh, is the surface of a, of a deeper issue. Um, we've been trying to have on the UK's tidal gauge network, seven of the gauges, which are meant to uh, work to the standards of the Global Sea Level Observing System, GLOSS, uh, which are cl climate quality. And um, since uh, about two, 2018, uh, we've been working with colleagues up there to get these upgraded to radar tide gauges and um, um, had, until recently, miserably failed in actually getting this to happen. It doesn't cost very much money, uh, but the amount of bureaucracy and all sorts of nonsense in the way of making this happen was just in, in, incredible. So um, uh, I, I'd, I'd even said that this was so important and I was so determined to get this to happen that I was going to put it on my bucket list. And um, But by the time I had retired, uh, we still hadn't achieved it. Um, and um, but that was uh, a more um, symptomatic of a bigger issue. It wasn't really about seven tie gauges. Uh, I've talked often about the uh, infrastructure for sustained continuous ocean observing, um, which is absolutely imperative if we are going to manage a rapidly changing ocean in an informed way you know this isn't just monitoring for monitoring's sake or or, or whatever or for curiosity i mean those things are important as well but um it's actually to understand how this rapidly changing ocean is is changing so that we can have some idea of what is going to happen next some predictability and so that we can actually evaluate some of the solutions that we put in place and the actions that are needed in the ocean. Now, can we design them in, a, in, a, in an effective way, informed by the data? And can we evaluate whether they're working, what, what we need to do? That's, that's in terms of managing the ocean. And then in terms of just the basic science of trying to understand how the ocean works, you know, the, the big issues are around what's happening at scale. And, and, and we need, um, along with experimental science with laboratories at sea, by which I mean ships, we also need this, this infrastructure. And um, not just me, many people across the world have been advocating and pushing for this. And yet that infrastructure still is creaking at the seams. It is not in, in place. And the seven tide gauges... I mean, heaven knows, everyone knows uh, that sea level is important, that uh, global sea level rise is one of the biggest consequences of climate change. We also know that it's likely to be one of the biggest impacts on human beings. Um, and yet, um, somehow, everything seems to work against just being able to fix that problem and I think so what happens to some of the more 
esoteric things we're trying to observe in the ocean, like oxygen. Not that esoteric, but it's more esoteric as far as I can see than than the obvious that we ought to be just keeping a track on what's going on with sea level. Um, so that's an area where there's a lot, a lot more to to do. It started. It was why. Uh, I was so keen that the G7 take an interest in sustained observing systems. It's it's why I've um, been a very passionate advocate and supporter of the Partnership for Observation of the Global Ocean, POGO, which is the you know 40 or so oceanographic institutions across the world um, like us. We're the ones with the actual capabilities to put kit in the water to to to, me to measure it and to to run these systems, and it's why I've um, and probably the thing I've done internationally that I've enjoyed most is working with the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO, uh, which is actually one of the sponsors of the Global Ocean Observing System. And that's putting in place the, the architecture at the governmental level to make this, this, this possible. Um, so those are all the bits of machinery to make it work, but it, it's, it's not there yet and it's a long way off. And if anything, I feel it's going in reverse um, in terms of the way in which it's seen as an important thing to support and fund. And yet at the same time, the very technologies that we're innovating and developing it are making it even more possible to do. So in addition to the technological innovation that is going on making it possible, we somehow need to have a, a mindset and a, and a business model uh, transformation to to bring it in into being but that one uh, has so far eluded yeah. me and and others but i'd like to think that we've put some things in place that are making it more likely to happen than not although it's one of the areas where i do express frustration mm. that it's not moving and so so when my answer to that question was uh, tide gauges, uh, <laughs> they were just a, a symbol for that, yeah. that, that bigger issue. So what, what do you think you're going to miss about working at NOAA? So I think uh, clearly the most obvious thing is people. Mm. Um, that's what matters, really. Um, and. Um, I, I, I think the people at NOC are absolutely f fantastic and uh, the sheer level of commitment. We've got some outstanding scientists here, uh, highly respected across the world. Um, but we also have what uniquely national institutions like this can do. We have everything that goes around it to make that possible, uh, to work in big teams, on sustained programs you know with a long-term vision the engineers that make it possible the uh, the data scientists you know all of the people who in many different ways um, um you know looking after our buildings our it systems you know our finances uh our legal people who um who really uh work behind the scenes making this whole enterprise possible mm. um i just never cease to be astounded by uh by by what they do and what they can do yeah. um so so that's what i i i'd miss i've i've I just feel hugely privileged to have had some part in enabling um that that to 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 happen um and uh, long, long may it may it continue. Absolutely. So, you've been running at hundred miles an hour for over forty years. You know, you're renowned for your these boundless energy. Um, as you look towards, you know, look forward to retirement. Um, what's going to keep you up, Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, of course, um, uh, I, I'm not planning to. Uh, completely uh, walk away from uh, uh, from my interest and passion for for, for the ocean um, 
as somebody who's led an institution for a long time, I do think it's right that I step uh, aside. It's, it's a role that's somewhat different from being a research scientist where um, the only difference I notice when many researchers retire is they, you know, they come in the day after and they carry on doing their research. Uh, they're not paid a salary anymore, but for some reason they look a lot happier. Uh, <laughs> So, um, um, but I think when you've been uh, uh, running the institution, you don't quite have that luxury of just being able to uh, walk back the day after. Uh, it's important that I provide some 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 distance and space for for, for my successor, who 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 will do a great job. Uh, um, but um, I'm I'm looking to um, uh, I'm. Uh, on the board of the Institute of Marine Gen Engineering, Science and Technology, and uh, uh, I'm on the trustee board of, uh, of, a, of another uh, institution, the Institution of Environmental Sciences. So I'm, I'm, these are both professional bodies. Um, and um, I'm sort of always open to uh, providing a, a advice or uh, uh, share my uh, insights with anybody who would, uh, who would be interested. So I'll, I'll, I'll after taking a, a break of six months or so, um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be doing that. But I've always had uh, interests uh, outside uh, uh, ocean sciences and actually outside of science um, that I've never quite had uh, the, the time to, uh, to, to pursue. I, I mean, I'm, I'm hugely fascinated in uh, historical uh, things and uh, travelling and uh, may, maybe it's time to pick up the paintbrush as well yeah. and, uh, and uh, s see whether what they said was true, that yeah. that was where my real talent yeah. lay. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, so I, may, I may do that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so Ed, Professor Ed Hill, C CV, it's been an absolute pleasure sharing these memories with you. I um, hope to see you again in the future and uh, may you have a, a long and happy retirement. Thank you very much, Peter. Delight talking to you.